It all started with a ding. I checked my phone to see the notification. Your package is arriving today. I stared at it, confused. I hadn't ordered anything off Amazon recently. In fact, I thought I'd uninstalled the app from my phone in an attempt to save myself from 1am impulse buys of weird kitchen gadgets I didn't need. Hey Ben, I said. Did you buy something off of Amazon? Yeah, socks, a coliander, and a... what was it? Oh, those little rings that hold up shower curtains with the metal beads on them. No, that was last week. I'm talking about today. There's a package arriving. He furrowed his eyebrows. Oh, no, I didn't order anything since then. Did you? No, that's why I'm asking you. He frowned. Maybe Alexa ordered something by mistake? Does that happen? Yeah, a lot of people complain about it online. Of course, another way for Amazon to reel in money by making mistake orders, quote unquote. Whoops, you just spent $102.71 on a new stainless steel frying pan. With a huff, I pulled out my computer. I went to Amazon, clicked orders, and there it was. An item. Ordered a few days ago. But the product image was replaced with a standard gray text. No image available. The price box said $0.00. The title of the project read, Unknown. Underneath, in green bold letters, it read, Arriving today by 8 p.m. Hey Ben, look at this. His eyes glanced over the computer screen. Oh, that's so weird. Probably just a glitch. He looked at me, and I must have looked pretty upset because he added, I wouldn't worry about it, Ellie. I waited for the doorbell to ring. Every time I heard the slightest thump or scuffing sound outside, I jumped and peered out the window to see if the package had arrived. But the afternoon passed without an event. As the time approached 8 p.m., the package still hadn't arrived. I felt both disappointment and relief. I had been excited to see what this mystery package was, but also a bit freaked out over what appeared to be some sort of phantom Amazon order. But I guess it was a glitch. There never was any package that could be delivered. It was just an error in the system. Then, at 7.46pm, my phone dinged. Your package has arrived. I jumped off the couch and ran to the door as fast as my feet would take me. You okay, Ellie? Ben called out, holding a cold slice of pizza. The package is here. Ooh, he said through a mouthful of congealed cheese. Thought it was just a digital glitch, but if they actually sent us a package we didn't pay for, awesome, free stuff. It's not awesome, it's weird. He followed me to the door, practically dancing. My hand fell on the knob, shaking. I shouldn't be nervous, I scolded myself. Mail mix-ups happen all the time. Ben's right. This is good. It's free stuff. Free stuff is always good. I yanked the door open. There it was. A brown box about a foot on a side, sealed shut with blue tape. I bent over and picked it up. It was much heavier than I expected. Here, I'll take it, Ben said. We brought it into the kitchen, set it down on the island, and grabbed a butcher knife. Ready? He asked. I guess. He lunged it through the tape, pulled open the flaps. What the hell? He said, backing away from it. It was empty. I was, star I was staring at an ordinary cardboard, slightly frayed and bent in places, held together with that blue tape. I circled around the island, staring inside, as if something might somehow materialize out of thin air. But it was so heavy, I finally said. How could it be empty? I thought it was going to be something really good, like a boombox, Ben replied sadly. A boombox? What is this, the 90s? He laughed. Hey, I would have been happy. He disappeared back into the living room. I grabbed the box and lifted it. It was light now. Normal. As my heart slowed, I folded the box up and tossed it into the recycle bin. 
all that fuss over an empty box. I woke up cold. I squinted at the clock. 3.34 a.m. The window was wide open, curtains blowing in the breeze. Damn it, I said, rushing up to close it. That's when I noticed the bed was empty. Ben? I whispered. I glanced over at the bathroom. The lights were off. The bedroom door hung wide open, though a, dar a dim golden light shone across the stairs. He was downstairs. I walked out of the hallway. It had been even colder out here. I whipped around and noticed every bedroom door was open, and inside each, every window was open. What kind of fuckery has Ben up to? Ben! I shouted. No reply. I sighed and started down the stairs. As I descended, I started to hear it. Shh. A repeated metallic noise that throbbed in my ears like a heartbeat. Damn it, Ben! I called loudly. What the hell are you? I froze. Ben was standing at the kitchen island, hunched over something. He didn't look up at me. His arm just moved back and forth, almost mechanically. He was sharpening knives. Every single knife we owned was divided into two piles on the other side of him. Shh. Shh. He pulled the knife out of the sharpener and placed it in the right pile with a metallic clang. Then he picked up the next one, a 12-inch long chef's knife, and began sharpening that. And then he stopped. I ducked behind the wall, holding a hand over my mouth. Ellie? He called from the kitchen. My lungs felt like they would burst. I have something to show you, he said. His voice was flat, almost monotone. His bare feet slapped against the tile, slowly, heavily, as he walked towards me. I took in a slow, shuddering breath, extended my foot out in front of me silently. Ellie? I ran. I took off down the hall. My feet slipped against the linoleum, but I forced myself forward, lungs burning. Ellie? He screamed. His voice was no longer light and kind. It was angry. I grabbed the keys off the hook, then I opened the garage and ran out into the driveway. His hulking form was silhouetted but in the doorway. The knife gripped tightly in his hand. I drove, I dove into the car, locked the door, started it up. The headlights washed over him, and his eyes glinted eerily in the light. For a moment, he was still. Then he ran towards the car, as fast as he possibly could, knife raised in his hand, mouth open in an animalistic howl. I peered out of the driveway. My mind way raced. Ben had never been violent. Never. Maybe it, maybe it wasn't what it looked like. Somehow he was innocent and I let my fears get the worst of me. I knew it was impossible. There was no other explanation. I didn't want to accept it. It wasn't until I pulled into the police station that I remembered the empty package. So heavy that we lifted it from the doorstep. So light after Ben opened it. Maybe the box wasn't empty after all. Maybe they, there was something inside. Something we couldn't see. And we had just let the thing 